Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can use Cheat Engine for an emulator like Mimu or Bluestacks. If you try to attach Cheat Engine to the emulator, you're going to get nothing. Every scan you do is going to turn up zero results. So I'm going to be doing this tutorial with Mimu, but I'll also show you how to set it up for Bluestacks. It's the same process. so you can apply this to whichever emulator you're playing. So the first thing you need to know is that when you're attaching Cheat Engine, you don't wanna just go into this Applications tab that has all your applications. You wanna go into your Processes tab, and this is gonna show you where all your processes are. So if you're on Mimu, you're gonna see Mimu.exe, Mimu Service.exe, Mimu Headless.exe. So for Mimu, we're picking MimuHeadless.exe, and that's the process that we're attaching to. Now, if you're trying to use Cheat Engine on Bluestacks, the process you're looking for is called HDPlayer.exe, and it has a Bluestacks icon. That's how you can tell that's the right one. So that's the one that you attach the debugger to. Once Cheat Engine is attached, we can start scanning just like we would any other game. We are attached. If that's all you needed to know, good job, you got it. Now you can move forward. So I'm just going to show an example here. This game is called Tiny Island Survival. In this game, you just collect wood and you collect stone and you can sell it for money and you use that money to upgrade your health. So we have a few values here that we can play with. There's how much wood we have, how much stone we have, how much money we have. You can see it's glitched because I've already done the cheat and how much health we have, which changes when we use energy to collect materials. You can see here we ran out of health, but I have the addresses for health here, so I just changed it. And now you can see I can continue playing, basically infinite health here, so we never have to go and regen our health. And now we see we have one iron bar. So we're gonna scan for one. We'll wait for the new iron bar to spawn. We loot it. We scan for two, loot another one, scan for three, loot one more, and now we have our address for iron. Name that iron, and we'll set this to 99. And now we have 99 iron. We set all our crafting materials to 99 and we freeze them, and now we unlock our silver mine. Loot one silver, I'm gonna scan for silver, loot another silver, Scan for two, loot another, scan for three. And there's our silver value. Set it to 99, freeze it, and we upgrade all our tools. So the next item we need to upgrade is bones from monsters. And you can see this game just keeps going on and on and on, and that's what makes this game so awesome. Um, with cheating, we can get through this really fast. I think just with what we did so far, um, that was probably one full day of playing this game um, and we did that in about 10 minutes pretty easy to get progress in these kinds of games really fun to cheat it is possible um, you just have to attach to the right process before you can get started and if you still can't find the value that you're looking for i would say instead of looking for a four bytes value type i would just search for all and that might take a long time but it's a good way to just drill down for the first time you're finding the addresses. Once you find the addresses after that, it's fine. You don't need to do that. Again, you'll know what to scan for or you can save pointers. One thing that I found doesn't work uh, is if you want to see the op codes for how the code is written into the game while it's running, that doesn't work. It, do it shows nothing. So basically you're emulating on a virtual machine so you're not really getting opcodes because opcodes are based on your processor running processes and we're running a virtual machine. So we're not gonna get opcodes. Um, so I'm gonna close this game now and we're gonna go into Bluestacks and we're gonna pick HD player and we're gonna look at our player's power level here, which is 10,137. 10,137 and we'll do a first scan We'll search for unchanged value because it hasn't changed. So we'll just go and train some troops and that will increase our power. 
Now it's 10,187. So we'll scan for that. We'll do it again. And now we can see all of these addresses that are stored as doubles are responsible for our player's power count. And we did scan for all value types because we don't know what it's going to be stored as. We can see here this D in front of all of these addresses means that it's stored as a double. And if we change the double to something like a four byte, you can see it says value zero. So it has to be a double, at least for this game specifically in BlueStacks. So we can go to all of these addresses and change the value to something like 20,000 and see what that does to our power level. So we can see here on our player card, it says 20,000. Here it still says 10,000. It hasn't updated, um, at least for this menu. So one thing we can do is try to train some troops, force the menu to update. And you can see it, it for a second, it blinked. It went up to 20,000 and then it went down to the actual value it's supposed to be. So this value can't change because it's server sided. That means only the game developers have control over this value. I can't access it no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I'll never be able to change this value for real. I can only make it look different on my own screen. Only I am gonna see that I changed my power to 20,000. Nobody else is gonna see that. But you can see here that we were able to attach to the process in BlueStacks and start changing values. But if we were doing this on a game that's not like an online game like this, then we would be able to use the cheats like if I did it on that tiny survival game. But for games like this, where you can't cheat to change the values, you can set up macros. So in this game, I have a macro to go fight these barbarians that are all hanging around my base. And I have another macro that's meant to go explore all of this map area here. So I've already pre-recorded the macros. I could just click go on the macro and without doing anything, the emulator is just gonna go and play the game for me. And I can just hope that my macro is efficient enough to run without my supervision. So I am also going to make a video on how to do that. I'm going to do that for this game specifically. I'm going to show you how I made this macro that plays the game for me. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you. Please remember to press the like button. It helps a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'll see you in another video.